there are three main areas for countries to focus on. First, we call on all countries to ensure core public health measures are fully funded, including case finding, testing, contact tracing, collecting data, and communication and information campaigns. Second, we also call on countries and partners to strengthen the foundations of health systems. That means health workers must be paid their salaries and health facilities need a reliable supply of funding to purchase essential medical supplies. Third, we call on all countries to remove financial barriers to care. If people delay or forego care because they can't afford it, they not only harm themselves, they make the pandemic harder to control and put society at risk. Um, and so it is very um, difficult um, and misleading uh, to be comparing mortality rates. What we really need to be focusing on right now are what is the age profile of people who are in ICU? Um, we've talked about this before. We're seeing more and more individuals who are of the younger age group in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, who are in ICU and who are dying. Overwhelmingly, we do see a trend across countries that people who are older, people who have underlying conditions, will have more advanced disease. So if the population that is affected have those characteristics, then you'll have a higher risk of death. Um, but um, we have some time to go before we can really understand what mortality looks like across different countries. So I would urge you to, to, to take those mortality rates with caution when comparing across countries.